This is a brief video demonstration showing the Bermad range of air release valves model C10 and C30 on exactly how to disassemble and maintain the valve in the field. For the purpose of the demonstration, we have a pipeline here with water pressure inside the pipe and the pressure is isolated from the air valve with the butterfly valve here. So the following process is exactly how we suggest that you clean and maintain the air release valve. The first thing that we do is that we isolate the valve from the pipeline itself by closing the butterfly valve and this uh, isolates the pressure from the valve itself. The next thing we have to do is to release the water pressure from the valve so we can safely take it apart. If the valve is fitted with a drain valve, we simply insert a flathead screwdriver into the screwdriver slot, turn it slowly anti-clockwise until we see water starting to drain out through the valve. And this is now depressurizing the valve. Now, if your product doesn't have this optional drain valve, you may have a quarter inch plug fitted into the body in here. So to depressurize, you use a 916 spanner and simply apply the spanner and turn it anti-clockwise. Now, very importantly, when you're taking any plug out of a pressurized valve, make sure you're standing on the opposite side to the plug and undo it very slowly and wriggle it to release the pressure and then safely take it out and just to make sure that it doesn't spray onto yourself or impart on you. So, once the water is now drained out through the valve like we can see here, we can safely remove the cover from the valve. So, by unscrewing the cover slowly, and just do this carefully in case there's a little bit of water pressure here, we're going to remove the cover anti-clockwise. And here we have the, uh, the, the cover taken off the valve. So the first thing we're looking for inside the valve is to make sure there's no poly shavings or debris sitting up against the valve itself. Then we simply remove the float assembly. Now with the float assembly, there's two seals inside the valve. There's the kinetic seal on the top here. So we just want to make sure there's no debris sitting around the top. Then with your fingers, just carefully take the pins off the side of the float. And this exposes the inner automatic orifice. And this is the small slot that we can see inside the valve in here. And what we want to make sure is that there's no debris sitting up against there and there's no debris sitting on the peel seal. Once that's clear and all back together, we can simply put the float back together with the pins going back into the float. The valve is in this position here now. We reassemble the float back into the valve body and it doesn't matter what position that it's in. Before putting the cover back onto the valve, just make sure there's no dirt or dust around the actual threads itself. Carefully put the cover back onto the valve body. Tighten it up so it's square with the valve. Then either apply some Teflon tape to the plug, reinsert the plug, or if you've got the optional drain valve, which we have here for testing purposes, simply close the small flathead screw and it's good to be pressurized again. We slowly open up the inlet valve. Sometimes we can have some discharge of water, but we slowly open up the valve and the valve should seal as long as we have at least one meter of water pressure, which is designed and tested for. Now, if the valve is fitted with a surge protection mechanism, this is screwed onto the discharge of the valve. It's worth at this point also just removing the surge protection uh, mechanism, making sure there's no debris or dirt around the actual, uh, the, the membrane itself. Make sure when you're putting it back together that you put the two flaps in, in this direction and then screw back onto the valve. If you have the optional IP or inflow protection device, you can remove the IP device here, make sure that there's no debris around the actual seal itself or the float, push the mechanism back in, be sure and put the mechanism in the right direction because this is a non-return valve, push it in until it's completely flush, and then screw back onto the valve. This is the, uh, the inner float mechanism which is used in the smaller 25 and 20 millimeter valves. It's slightly different to the 50 millimeter valve, but it's identical inside in that it has an upper sealing orifice here, which we need to check is clean. And we don't have to remove the pins. We simply have to open up the float here to expose the automatic orifice, make sure that it's clean and put it back together. So that's the float mechanism for the 20 millimeter valve and the floats for the 15, 80 millimeter valve. 
If required, we have service kits or seal repair kits. Once the valve gets many years old, you may want to replace them. They're available from Bermud. And as always, if you require further information, such as installation, operation, and maintenance manuals, data sheets, you can go to the Bermad website at bermad.com.au or you can go to the Bermad YouTube channel where you can see a series of different video and um, animations that demonstrate how the valves work. Thank you for watching.